We're late for the video, but honestly, who gives a damn? Play the freaking intro. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your boy the Death Smasher, and I present to you guys the easiest, skippable end of the month that we have seen yet. The Lunar New Year Summons. Wait, what the frick? Another New Year banner? Yo, um, what happened to Valentine's Day? Anyways, what is going on, you guys? This is your boy the Death Smasher, and I figure I may as well, you know, talk about this banner because. We were all expecting either a Valentine's Day themed banner or movie characters because of the recent data mines from Heken and Soldex just because of what has been uh, found through the actual maintenance and everything else that we need to know and we're getting this and I'm gonna be realistic. Rookie is actually very amazing. Rengiku not so much, but the banners they're in. Oh my God. Oh my God. It's an easy skip because there is literally no good value in summoning on the end of the month banner. But that being said, the individual banners, I'ma give credit where it's due. Rengiku's individual banner, I'ma be honest, don't summon for Rengiku, but if you're after any of the other characters that are in the banner, it's actually pretty good, because Nemu, still third best tech character in the game. She's been replaced by Spiritar Forever with Yuretsu, but she still has goddamn value, and she is an IT machine just like Ikoni, and is just a very good character. Lisa being a Link Slot Potion character if you don't have Nini, and then this Ruruka, Bro, this entire banner is literally made for IT, if you guys know what I mean, despite not being super link saw potion characters. And then Rookie's banner, oh my god, it's a very good stacked banner because we have Swimsuit Retsu, which is a very good link slot potion character for speed. And if you do actually go out of your way to 5 out of 5 her, you can actually potentially get sub 1 second runs in guild quests. Like, do not sleep on that devastation with 40% that has weakened defense, weakening on everything, just so that way you can get her to T20 and give her another weakened defense and full stamina damage boost and nuke just as hard as any unit with bombardment can do that has weakening, which is very good. And then we have this Christmas Rengiku, which is just a very good tech spotter killer. If you are in need of one, this is definitely a good one to go for. And then this Lolly right here is kind of the only uh, character that is mid in the banner, but um, yeah, that's basically the individual banner summed up. Honestly speaking, if you guys want to skip for the end of the month banner, which I advise you guys do so, just go for the individual banners, mainly for Rukia, because uh, I'm going to break down the characters real quick. But now, end of the month banner. Let's get into it. So, what is it going to bring us? Um, hello, Caleb. What is this? What is this? Where are the good characters? I'm sorry, what? Huh? Huh? Okay, I'm gonna break down this banner real quick. You and you, you guys are literally the only good fillers in this banner. Literally the only ones because, okay, Nelio, I'm gonna give credit where it's due. She has the high chance of being able to inflict weakening against Heart Soul Reapers, but the kit just isn't as good because she has double lunges and then the third Tron attack is the same as 5th Anniversary Byakuya, so like, if you guys hate lunges, you're not gonna enjoy this character, so like, in my opinion, Nelio is kinda mid, in my opinion. She's okay, but not the best, so yeah. Kukaku, no guard break, so you're trash, you don't even have the insane multipliers that Fierce Battle Nelio has. You're trash, you're trash, you're trash. That's all I gotta say. That's literally the banner summed up, and it's literally why you should skip. There's nothing good out of summoning on this banner. If you want to summon on a banner right now, summon for freaking Thousand Year Blower. Summon for this one. You're going to get way more value out of this one than this coming end of the month gotcha. And it's literally going to last until the 2nd of February. So, like, you guys have time. Plus, these two characters are way more freaking busted than what we have in the end of the month gotcha. Okay, now let us go ahead and break these characters down. Now, Rukia is literally the third Mind Flurry character that we have gotten in a row, which is actually crazy, except this time around, she's an actual Aronker killer and is a ranged normal attack character, can boost on her second Tron attack, 
has a new skill called Booster, and on top of that, she is an Aronker killer. Guys, we've been lacking a very good solid booster for ranged Aronker week for who knows how long because the only optimal ones that we could use before her were literally the Speed Veruca and the Redux Nanao, which don't have Flurry. And now we have this character right here who is literally going to be your go-to for guild quests. And even then, outside of guild quests, this character is pretty freaking busted because let's just take a look at everything else. So for starters, she has Guard Break. Okay, okay, now we're talking. She has Burn Plus 1, Freeze Immunity. T to be honest, it's kind of the wrong status element. She should have gotten Fire Immunity. Like, it makes no sense as to why she got Freeze Immunity when there's literally freaking Burn Puddles. But anyways, overall 80% Bruiser because the NAD 20% Soul Trait and the 60% Bruiser right here. Flurry plus 1, Ailment Reversal, what the frick? Berserker plus 50%, Enhancer, Poise, Booster, Follow Up, and also has ranged damage by freaking 10% and it's 30% in guild quests. Um, yo, freaking second best or first best NAD character that we have in the game right now. Um, let me know if you guys think this character is better than Jushiro, because I still think that Jushiro is still better than her, but like, oh my god, she completely replaced Masaki with what she has like what the frick she even has follow-up which is very good it's literally what you would want to have on an ad unit for when it comes to killing off the downed enemies which is very good like she has it all she has it all so like very good and then uh this Rengiku right here she's another power a ronker killer is a ranged strong attack character has paralysis on everything and she has the revival mechanic on the soul bomb but let's take a look at everything else. Strong attack reach a time of minus 12%. Team party, 20% stamina recovery. Read Aronker dodges and immobilizer every 5 seconds. Havoc at 20%. Frenzy plus 1. Berserker 40. Increased status ailment chance against technique attribute Aronkers. Guard break, full stamina damage boost, and spurn plus 1 leg. She has very good skills. I'm not going to cap at you guys. She has very good skills. But the problem with this character is that we have way too much competition for when it comes to power Aronker killers. And... Let's just go ahead and uh, get into the gameplay real quick, just to basically, you know, showcase the characters real quick. So yeah, alt tab and let's get into it. So uh, yeah, let's just watch it. Although I know I'm late, but you know, since this is my video, I think I may as well, you know, talk over it. So yeah, here we have Rengeku, which is the worst of the banner, but let's get into why. So uh, yeah, we already know everything about the skills. We just went over them. Let's just jump over to the gameplay. So yeah, the natching. We don't really care about that. She's not a NAD character. Goes forward and pushes enemies. And I don't like the sound of it because it's looking like the bad 18% mag shade. The second draw attack goes forward and extends out. It seems to be the 3k length beam. It seems to be the case. And then the third Tron attack is full screen. Not too terrible, but like, honestly, the first Tron attack is what really, 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 really holds her back, in my overall opinion. Uh, let's take a look at the special, though. Eh, it's okay, nothing too special, but now let's move on to Rukia, which is the one I'm kind of excited about, so... Yeah, let's get into the gameplay, we already know what she does. Hatching is very clean, though. Although, it's just the lantern, so... Hmm, I don't know. Goes forward and pushes the enemies. It's a range collision attack, but honestly, you don't really want to care about that for NAD characters. You really don't. Second draw attack, it's the, um, it's the 800 circular AoE in front. It's not really, you know, needed, but it's still very good, though. It's still very good. And then the third draw attack is full screen. Yeah, you can build her up hybrid, which is actually pretty good. So, yeah, it's not too bad. Not too bad at all. Now, let's take a look at the actual special move. Okay, this is actually adorable. <laughs> I don't know. I think they put a lot more effort with the uh, Rukia special. But uh, yeah, that's basically the characters, um, you know, wrapped up for when it comes to the overall gameplays. But now the uh, overall Reddit. Shoutouts to Soldex once again for the actual info. And uh, yeah. The first Tron attack, it's basically 30% mag shave. 
Funny enough, it's literally the same SA3 as uh, Sun Sun, except it's as an SA1, which is kind of curious. I've not seen this SA3 in a good bit. I'm not going to lie. It, it pushes back. I know. I remember that much. But yeah, 800 AWE in front and then the full screen on the third. I mean, again, the strong attacks don't really matter too much. Like you want to mainly do damage with your normal attacks. But just having, you know, the strong attacks for protection, it's always good to have at the end of the day. So, uh, yeah, Rengiku on the other hand, let's take a look at the actual attacks. And yeah, the 18% mag pushback attack. And the worst part is she doesn't even have the 80% SP buff that uh, Noel has. So that's very bad. That's very bad. SA2, 3k length beam, but only with a width of 870. And then the third Tron attack is full screen. Now, don't get me wrong, Rangiku still has a good third and a good second. But again, the problem with her is that there's just way too much competition for when it comes to power or ronker killers as a whole that you don't even need to use Rangiku for when it comes to IT. Like, who do we have that we can use as a ronker killers? Well, I'm going to show you guys. We have Bruno. We literally have Bruno, who is literally a god. So, like, you don't need him. And if we want to talk about overall power or rocker killers, guys, if you have 5th anniversary Ichigo, what are you guys waiting for? Use him. Like, okay, sure, lunges are dangerous, but honestly, I'd rather take a lunge than an 18% mag shave attack that literally does nothing at this point. At least it's consistent damage. And once you used it, just freaking flashed up out of there. Like, yes, freaking three flashed ups and not two. Like, come on, man. Come on. And then we have Thousand Year Blower Ruki, which is also very good. Sure, no Marauder, but like... She'll still hit just as hard as Rengiku, so yeah, that's all I gotta really say. But um, yeah, guys, skip this banner. It's not really worth it. If you guys want to summon for Rukia, by all means, go for the individual banner. Go for the individual banner as it has the most amount of value. Like, they made the individual banners a lot better than the actual end of the month gotcha, so that way you guys can actually save your orbs. Now, I'm personally gonna save my orbs because I don't need the characters. Like, sure, I would love to have that Rukia for ranged or Ronker week, but I don't need her right now. Like, she'll come. She'll probably be on the anniversary banner or even poll selection, so I'm not too worried about it. It's a seasonal character at the end of the day. And also, Caleb, what the hell were you thinking with these bonuses? What? What? Yeah, this is so dumb. This is so dumb. I don't even know what the hell they were thinking because the only good bonuses I see here are literally the fifth anniversary characters, this Rukia, and then that's it. That's all I literally see here. And because this is Awakened Epic Raid, the boss has triple the amount of health that the normal Epic Raid does have. So like these bonuses were badly selected. I'm sorry. It was badly selected. Kenpachi should have been the 50% bonus. Not this Byakuya. He's freaking garbage. Stark should not have been a freaking bonus at all. Like, come on. It makes no freaking sense. No freaking sense. No complaints about mine. It's good. Like, there's no complaints. Even speed is good. Although Shurn is okay, but he does have a 40% bruiser, so it's okay. No complaints with uh, Ichigo or Rengiku, although she is kind of weaker than Ichigo in this case. Like, it would have been better to have someone else. But like, heart and tech. Oh my god, it's garbage. I'm sorry. I've got nothing good to say about this whatsoever. So, um, yeah. But that being said, from the epic raid bonuses, we can actually tell that a lot of good banners are going to be coming back throughout the month of February. And you know what? I'm going to be making a video about it. So I hope you guys do stay tuned for that. But um, yeah, thank you guys for watching this video. If you guys have actually enjoyed it, don't forget to smash that like button. Share this video with your friends and family. Subscribe to the channel if you guys haven't already. And hit the bell notification so that way you guys are up to date with my most recent videos. This has been your brother, that Smasher, and I'll see you guys all in the next one. Thank you, K-Lab, for giving me the opportunity to save up my goddamn orbs. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace out, lads. Oh!